Hi, welcome to HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to perform the calculations involved with a 2x2 two two table analysis, or a 2x2 two two contingency table analysis. Uh, this is also known as a Pearson chi-square analysis. There are six uh, relatively easy steps involved with this. First of all, now let's do a summary of these steps. Uh, create a table of observed frequencies. Calculate column and row totals. Calculate expected frequencies. That's probably the toughest part. Calculate differences between observed and expected frequencies. And then sum the differences uh, between those observed and expected frequencies. And this ultimately gives the Pearson chi-square value. Then finally, compare the obtained Pearson chi-square value against the critical chi-square value. And this helps us determine statistical significance. All right, so step one. This is based on an example that I did a previous video on uh, in SPSS, uh, testing the hypothesis that handedness, left right, right handed, left handed, is associated with dyslexia. And specifically, that there is a disproportionate percentage of left handers who seem to be also reporting dyslexia or been diagnosed with dyslexia. All right, so the observed frequencies, in this case, there were 223 right-handers who uh, were reported as non-dyslexic. And that's the observed frequency there. Now, right-handers who were diagnosed with dyslexia, that's five people right here. Then we've got left-handers who do not have dyslexia, 17 people. And then finally, left-handers who were diagnosed with dyslexia, five. All right, and the uh, Pearson chi-square analysis is going to be testing whether um, this is uh, disproportionate to what you would expect based on chance. So what's the next step in this once you've included your uh, observed frequencies in the table? You need to calculate the totals for your columns and your rows. And then finally, for the total sample. So what do I mean? Literally, just sum 223 and 5 will give you 228. Now for this column here, left-handers, 17 plus 5, 22. Now 223 plus 17 is 240. 5 plus 5, 10. Now we need the whole sample, 240 plus 10 is 250. And we could have done that with this as well, 228 plus 22, 250. It doesn't matter. You could use the column or the row. So now that we have our expected frequencies, we need to cal uh, now that we have our column totals rather, we need to calculate arguably the toughest part of a uh, two by two table analysis, which is the expected cell frequencies. And I'll do that here. I've just removed the values for the observed frequencies, and I've created another table with my expected frequencies. How do we calculate that? Well. What is the expected number of people who are right-handed and not dyslexic if the null hypothesis is true? We calculate that by multiplying that column value by its corresponding row value and then dividing by 250, which is the total sample. All right, so let me get the calculator out. 228 times 240 divided by 250. And that gives me 218.88. So that is the expected frequency for this cell. The observed frequency is 223. The expected frequency is 218.88 under the null hypothesis, under the expectation that the null hypothesis is true. So there's not much deviation there. It's pretty close. Now what about for right-handers who are dyslexic? We need, what's the expectation there? 228 times 10 divided by 250. So what's that give me? 228 times 10 divided by 250, 9.12. And you'll recall that there were actually five people here. Five people were observed, but the expectation is nine. All right, that's, so there's some deviation there. Now let's calculate the expected frequency for this cell. Its corresponding column value is 22. Row, 244, so 22 times 240. 22 times 240 divided by 250 equals 